All right, in these examples, again, I just want to rationalize the denominators. But in this case, notice we're going to have binomials both in the numerator and the denominator. So just a little more complicated. OK, in my first example, um, again, since I'm rationalizing the denominator, I multiply both the top and the bottom by the conjugate of the denominator. So the conjugate of 4 plus square root of 3 will be 4 minus square root of 3. So I'm going to multiply the top and the bottom by 4 minus root 3. I like to put everything in parentheses in the numerator and denominator of each fraction just to remind myself that I do have to distribute. Okay, so we'll get 4 times 4, which would be 16 in the numerator. Uh, if I distribute my 4 to the negative root 3, we'll get minus 4 root 3. On the inside, notice I'll get a negative root 3 times 4, which I'm going to write as minus 4 square root of 3. And then our outside terms, we would have a negative root 3 and a negative root 3, which would make a positive square root of 9, which again just simply gives us 3. And in the denominator, we'll do the same thing. 4 and 4 is 16. We would have 4 times negative root 3, which will be minus 4 square root of 3. On the inside, we'll have a positive 4 square root of 3 when we multiply. And then our outside terms, we'll get a positive times a negative, which is a negative. The square root of 3 times the square root of 3 just leaves us with 3. So again, notice in the denominators, we can cancel out the negative 4 root 3 and the positive 4 root 3. And then we can just simplify what's left. We would have 16 um, plus 3 minus, OK, so notice I have a negative 4 root 3 and a negative 4 root 3. That'll leave us with negative 8 square roots of 3. In the denominator, I'll have 16 minus 3, which is 13. But I can do one more step as well. I've got 16 plus 3, which is 19, minus 8 square root of 3, all divided by 13. And that would be our final solution for this first problem. OK, so in our next one here, um, so we have 2 plus root 5 divided by 2 minus the square root of 5. So again, I'm just going to do the same thing. So let me rewrite it here first. Again, I multiply by the conjugate of the denominator. So in this case, the conjugate of the denominator would be 2 plus the square root of 5. And since I multiply it to the denominator, I also have to multiply it to the numerator. And again, it's the same thing now. It's just being careful with our factoring. OK, so we have 2 times 2, which will give us a 4. We'll have 2 times square root of 5, which will be 2 square root of 5. On the inside, we're going to get another 2 square root of 5. And then we'll have positive root 5 times positive root 5, which is positive square root of 25, which again is just positive 5. And then in the denominator, we have 2 and 2, which is 4. On the outside, we'll get a positive 2 square root of 5. On the inside, we'll get a negative 2 square root of 5. Then we have a negative times a positive, which is a negative. And the square root of 5 times the square root of 5 is just 5. So just a little cleanup here. So in the numerator, I've got a positive 4 and a positive 5. That's going to combine to make 9, positive 9. Then I have 2 root 5 plus 2 root 5. Well, that's 4 root 5. And in the denominator, our positive 2 root 5 and our negative 2 root 5 cancel out. And then I'm left with 4 minus 5, which is negative 1. And if we wanted to, just to, uh, since we're dividing by 1, just so we don't have to see it as a fraction, we can pull that negative out front. But if you do that, make sure that you put the numerator in parentheses. Because if you wanted to write this without parentheses, you would have to make, you know, this would turn into a negative 9. And this would turn into a negative 4 root 5 when you distribute the negative. So be careful about that as well.
So, all right, just another two quick little examples. I hope it's nothing too crazy, um, and I hope they make sense to you.